Hi everybody, it's Coach Ali and today we're going to understand protein and why it's the number one macronutrient for getting in shape. Once we have an understanding of protein and its benefits, we're going to look at different sources of protein and rank them from last to best. Remember that any ranking system is subjective, so different people will have different points of view. I'm looking at this from the importance of body fat levels and a hard and full appearance of muscles, ranking the protein sources by the ability to alter your physical appearance and functional performance. I guess it's fair to say that I'm looking at it from the perspective of a strength and conditioning coach trying to make his athletes look leaner, stronger and perform better. Protein is the building block for muscle development. It's commonly found in animal products, however, it is also present in plant-based foods such as legumes and nuts. Typically, protein makes up around 15% of our body weight and dominates some of our individual features such as our hair and our nails. Our bodies primarily use protein to build and repair tissues such as skin and muscles. However, we use protein to produce hormones and enzymes as well. Protein is also used to create antibodies which provide immune defense for our bodies. Experts say that we should all get between 10% and 35% of our daily calories from protein. Of course, if you want an aesthetic appearance, particularly if you're lifting regularly, then you want to be closer to the 35% mark. Five visible signs that you're not getting enough protein include brittle hair and nails, losing your muscle weight, feeling weak and fatigued, getting stress fra fractures in your bones, and catching a cold more than your friends. If you're showing some of these signs, then you're probably not getting enough protein. And this is where the following list comes into play. Now, before we get into the list, I'm going to remind you to calculate your recommended protein intake by taking your weight in kilograms and multiplying it by 1.5 to determine your minimum daily requirement for protein. Then I want you to take your body weight in kilograms again, multiply it by 2.2 to determine your maximum protein intake required for a healthy, strong and aesthetic appearance. The other thing I want to touch on real quick is that digesting protein burns calories. So a higher protein percentage of food is going to help you get lean and stay lean. Comparing protein, carbs and fats based on energy expenditure to digest food, you're looking at 20 to 30% for protein, 5 to 10% for carbs and less than 3% for fats. What does this actually mean? Okay, it simply means for every 100 calories of protein foods eaten, your body will burn up around 30 calories just to digest that food, leaving you with a net balance of 70 calories. If the same 100 calories were consumed in carbs or fats, you'd be left with 90 calories or 97 calories respectively after digesting them. Protein leaving you with the least amount of net calories is like dieting without actually dieting. Okay, let's get into the list of protein, guys. Broadly speaking, I'm breaking animal proteins into five categories, which include meat, poultry, fish, shellfish, and dairy. I'm going to include eggs in the poultry group for the purpose of this exercise. We're also looking at four categories of plant-based proteins, and these are legumes, which will include beans, nuts, seeds, and soy. Now, soy is a bean, but we're going to examine this one separately due to its unique characteristics. All right, the first category I want to examine today is soy, because in my book, it comes in dead last. Soy is a phytoestrogen, or in other words, a plant-based estrogen, and it contains two isoflavins which mimic estrogen in the body and completely mess up your hormonal balance. You might remember from my video, Five Hacks to Boosting Testosterone, which we determined that um, it's vital to stay away from soy products to retain hormonal balance required for an aesthetic physique. Having said that, the three um, high-protein soy foods are edamame beans, which are basically baby soy beans with 17% protein, tofu, which can be processed to appear like burger meat, sausage, bacon, and so on, which also has 17% protein, or unprocessed soybean, which is typically around 28% protein. The biggest negative takeaway from this group is obviously the effect of soy on your hormones, but the silver lining is that it contains low levels of saturated fats 
and moderately high amounts of fiber, which is beneficial for your heart. Um, nonetheless, soy gets the thumbs down in my book, and it goes into the avoid list. All right, for me, the next group is dairy, which contains four main protein foods. Milk, which is typically around 4% protein. Unsweetened yogurt, which is around 10% protein. Soft white cheese, such as ricotta cheese, uh, cottage cheese, or feta, ranging from around 10% to 17% protein. And finally, yellow firm cheeses, such as cheddar or Swiss or Parmesan, which range from 25% to 35% protein. The upside of dairy foods is that they are typically high in calcium, and when coupled with sufficient exposure to the sun or supplementation with vitamin D, they have a positive role in bone health, which is vital for supporting your muscles and your aesthetic appearance. Of course, on the flip side, some experts argue that there's no evidence that calcium from dairy is beneficial to bone health at all. What we know for sure is that dairy products are typically high in saturated fats and low-density lipoproteins, or bad cholesterol, if you like. And this isn't good news for your heart at all. The other issue is that with adulthood and aging, intolerance to lactose tends to develop, causing digestion problems for over 65% of people around the world. Can you imagine that's pretty much two in every three people? For this reason, while I would rank dairy ahead of soy, I'm going to throw it in the no bucket and give this one a thumbs down as well. Uh, the only exception I personally make is during my cheat meal when I'm having some cheese on my pizza. But if you can avoid that, then power to you. The next category for me is shellfish, which contains mollusks such as oysters and mussels, as well as crustaceans such as crabs and prawns. Some of the top protein food in this category are oysters with 13% protein, mussel with 18% protein, crab with 19%, abalone and scallop both with around 21% protein, lobster with 23%, and topping the list is prawn with 24% protein. Some benefits of shellfish include low calories and they're high in lean protein, which makes them great for weight loss. Most of the fat in shellfish is omega-3 fatty acids, beneficial both to your heart and for your brain function. Also, they're great for boosting your immunity because they're rich in zinc as well as other vital minerals such as iron and magnesium. On the downside, shellfish is typically high in mercury and cadmium, and since humans can't excrete um, heavy metals, then it could become a problem for our organs, especially with accumulation through time. Another downside is that people around 3% have significant allergy reaction to shellfish, from something as simple as vomiting to stomach pain to much more serious reactions like anaphylactic shock. Now, I personally don't have a problem with shellfish, therefore they rank ahead of soy and dairy in my book, particularly due to their significant upsides. I'm going to give it a thumbs up, but I'm going to put it in the occasional foods bucket. Next category is seeds. It's a plant-based protein, which means it suits vegans as well as carnivores like myself. Uh, some seeds have significant protein, and because there's no cooking involved, then the protein percentage is not diluted. Chia seeds have 16% protein. Flax and sesame seeds both have around 18%. Sunflower seeds have 21% protein. Pumpkin seeds, 30%, and hemp seed tops the list at 32% protein. Seeds are also a great source of fiber, and their fats are almost entirely monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats, which simply means that they can help you reduce and regulate cholesterol and blood pressure. For me, the only real downside is that they're extremely calorie-rich, both from fats, which make up 35 to 50 percent of their weight, and also carbohydrates, which account for 20 to 40 percent of their weight. Um, if you're trying to restrict your carbs or restrict your calories intake, then you should consume very small amounts of seeds. Let me give you guys an example. Um, if I was to consume my daily intake of protein, which is around 200 grams in sunflower seeds, then my actual calorie intake for the day would be around 5,500 calories. Now, consider that my daily calorie estimate is around 3,000 calories. So then... 5,500 calories would be enough to make me very fat very quick. 
Now consider that my daily workout is usually between 45 minutes and an hour, six days a week. Now I would have to train with the same intensity for nearly four hours a day to burn the additional two and a half thousand calories that I've accrued. For this reason, seeds rank ahead of soy, dairy and shellfish for me, but fall short on the other protein categories. Okay guys, we're out of time for this video, so let's call it an end to video one on proteins to continue to video two where I cover nuts, legumes, fish, poultry and meat. Simply click here or follow the link that I've provided in the description below. I'll see you guys shortly for part two.